no matter how big you guys get, you should just hang up on people no matter what. Right. If you just, <laughs> and pretend <laughs> and pretend you're having sex. You're listening to nothing important. Please enjoy the show. I was clicking around the old Facebook today. Yeah. And I come across this article and it's like top 20 players to target for your fantasy football team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sounds homo. And I was like, sounds homo erratic already. Go for it. Well, you know, I love me some fantasy football. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I click it. Mm-hmm. And not only is it a very generic, mediocre list of the same top 20 players you'll see in any list of fantasy football players everything you clicked was an ad you had to click you had to click to start it and that was an ad you had to click to go to the next page and that was an ad all the ads on there have arrows pointing over so you'll click them to think you're going to the next page oh, that's bullshit dude this is hyper annoying yeah. to me yeah i, I don't know bitches. those ads are tricky as fuck dude like they're just getting so sneaky with that shit the, you're talking about the clickbait right yeah, like everything that's like, number seven will shock you. What happened yeah, it's, next it's, blew my mind. Yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. always dumb shit like uh, trainers hate them or, or like yeah. 16 celebrities that gave, up, that gave up their firstborn child. Number 17 will shock you. <laughs> It's like nobody yeah. gives a fuck about that shit. <laughs> number number five is so true. Yeah. Twenty things your boyfriend wants you to do in bed. Number seven will blow his mind. See the thing about it, you know. the thing I hate about that stuff is like um I'll look at it and I'll know what it is, but every once in a while it'll still get me. <laughs> like I'll still Oh yeah. I'll still back like, That's happened today. That's totally that's totally an advertisement for some shitty site like BuzzFeed, but you know what? Maybe uh-huh. I want to do. I do want to see like the twenty-seven best like hand hand carved guitars. <laughs> like, <laughs> and maybe number ten will amaze me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like that's. I'll always click on you know fantasy football stuff. Mm-hmm. I want to see what people have to say about about players. But it's just like you know, oh Jimmy Graham. Yeah, no shit. Like I thought you were gonna give me some sleepers or you know be insightful. But nope, you just want me to click on shit. Right. Yeah. And everything's well, a fucking ad, and your ads look like they're part of the page. Right. Totally. Yeah. Um. Uh, another one that I always like at first, my first instinct is to click on. It'll say uh, banks hate this new strategy to pay off your mortgage, and I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting. But then I'm like, wait a minute, like. There's only one way to really fucking pay off your mortgage. Like, like there's no real news. <laughs> live, be- like, live below your means and save money. Right. And you can totally tell it's just some <laughs> shitty article written by somebody somewhere just to gain hits because it's like the most common sense thing. It's yeah. like uh, banks hate this newfound idea of how to pay off your mortgage in less time. And then when you click on the article, it's literally like pay more every month than you normally do. <laughs> like that's it. <laughs> The bank will hate that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Bankers hate <laughs> Banker. Bankers hate them. Ah, <laughs> uh, banker. You, you know what? Uh, uh. You know what I've uh, I've kind of uh, gotten really good at doing lately? Uh, what is that, Brian? Uh, being, I'm, I've become like a really good offensive driver, and it cracks me up. Yeah, I did that when I was uh, when I was spending some lot more time in the city. Mm-hmm. And in L.A., right? You kind of learn how to. Uh, right. Well, when, uh, you, you just have to get to the point where you understand the other car doesn't want to get hit either. Right. Like the thing is, is um, living up here in Chicago, there are ramps like coming down Lake Street, going on to ninety ninety four. There are ramps that are super steep and literally about ten car lengths long. And once you get down to the street level, there's no there's no entryway. It's just basically you're in the lane. Like so, once you come off the bridge, yeah. <laughs> there's no merge. There's no merge platform, no merge ramp. It's just like up, oh, you're off it's the like, bridge. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 
I always tell people, I'm like, when you're on that, just fucking keep going. Like, don't try to stop. Don't try to yield to the cars on the highway. Just fucking go. Right. And that's the only way that it, it seems like counterintuitive, right? Like, because it seems like uh-huh. if I keep going and I don't pause for traffic, I'm going to get hit. But it's not at all. Like, you just keep going. You go down the ramp at 30 miles per hour and you just go. And somehow, by, you know, amazement of the universe or wonderment of the universe or whatever, it, it all just kind of works out. So, well, learn learn how to accelerate off a ramp mm-hmm. and just that's my thing is is get up to speed. Be at speed when you hit the road mm-hmm. if at all possible. Right. And people get out of the way. But I think where I I've, I've come from is I I went from aggressive driver to alpha driver. And I've even started doing oh. it in situations where it doesn't even warrant it. For example, <laughs> <laughs> like like for example, uh drive through at McDonald's. <laughs> okay. um, uh, first off, and I say this every time I bring up McDonald's because you know there's at least like a hundred people listening to this. So it's like, oh my god, I never ate at McDonald's. Shut the fuck up. You go to McDonald's, but <laughs> yeah. I love McDonald's tea. I don't know for everything that they do that's not exactly the best quality. Their iced tea, not sweet tea, can't do the sweet tea. But the iced tea, I love the iced tea. I will literally when I go to work every day, the McDonald's next to my work knows that when I pull up, I'm just going to get two unsweet teas from McDonald's because I don't want to have to go back and get the second tea by 10 o'clock when I finish my first tea, right? But every, Mc- well, every McDonald's... Well, at least you teas from Taco Bell. Right, you know, like I'm planning ahead. <laughs> that's that's why where I work, I'm the boss. I plan ahead, right? <laughs> my, my ability to order two unsweet teas has somehow transferred into uh, a management position. So, <laughs> um, so, but every McDonald's now has two drive throughs and right. some of them, some of them have the dual lanes, but up here in the city where there's nowhere to expand, a lot of them have just moved the original drive through speaker up a couple car lengths and then stuck another drive through speaker back a couple car lengths. So it's the same lane, but it's two. It, it still has the ability to have two drive through speakers. Okay. Right? So. <laughs> I never, see, I, I never really found the ordering process to be the hang up in drive through backups. I mean, I don't really understand the multiple no. ordering. You're just funneling a bottleneck to the one right. window. No. Now, if they had two windows handing food out. No, here, here's what, here's the, um, here, here's the things that hold up drive throughs. Uh, people that still somehow don't know the menu to fucking McDonald's. And assholes who don't open the window, they open the fucking door to order. <laughs> I fucking hate those people. It's like, why? <laughs> like, just, just fuck. If it's going to cost you 50 bucks to get your fucking window fixed, like, stop eating at the drive thru for a few minutes. Well, for, I was going to say, if I have to open my door, I'm getting out of the car. So you might as well just walk in. Dude, and order. that shit happens all the time here in Chicago. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But people will pull up to the drive through speaker and they'll, you know, they have to get like a good like five, six feet away so they can open their door. And it's that, and these are like new cars. So it's not all like old, like 88 cutlasses. Like I've seen people. Well, actually, the new cars are the ones with the windows fuck up the most. Ask my brother about that. He had a a 2000 five that he had to get the window fixed four times well you know what then these people need to fix that shit because it's stupid that <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid to park six feet away open the door and lean almost like you you'll put like one foot out to like brace yourself as you lean into the speaker so you can yell your order you're like you said you're already fucking halfway out of the goddamn like, car anyway yeah you're just the, the the way to say that it's funny to me you're getting out of your car to use the drive through Right. You might as well walk through the fucking drive through <laughs> oh, you, you might as well save gas and push your car through the fucking drive through <laughs> But my, I really love the people that, instead of rolling down their window, open their fucking door, order their food, and then when they pull around to the window, they accidentally get too close to the building. So then they have to either back up or go forward and get out of their car and walk to the goddamn window anyway. So, now you've left your car twice right. for the convenience of staying in your car. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so anyway, so like, you know, the double, the double stack position, right there, there's only one lane, but mm-hmm. there's two, um, there's two, two order, two order things, system speakers. Uh, I love being in the second position because I've kind of taken to taking this weird pleasure in pulling around the car in front of me. 
Because like I said, <laughs> I almost always at McDonald's just get a tea. So I pull up like, hey, can I get your order? Yeah. Iced tea. Unsweet iced tea. Perfect. That'll be a dollar nineteen. Wonderful. But there's always an asshole in my way. And I always think it's funny just to pull around them. Just to watch the look on their face like, wow, what a fucking dickhead. <laughs> and then, and you know they're watching you. Right. So all they're going to see you get handed is one iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, that asshole couldn't wait for one fucking iced tea. Right? See? Alpha driver. <laughs> when it comes to McDonald's, I win that shit. But here's my, here's my crowning <laughs> achievement. Here's my crowning achievement of alpha driving so far. Okay? Shoot. So recently I went to... Uh, I went to Tennessee. My my dad retired, and we had a retirement party down in Tennessee for him. We rented like a giant fucking log cabin. Uh, I'd like to say out in the middle of the world, woods, but it was like down in like downtown Gatlinburg. <laughs> so there's like two or three <laughs> shit everywhere, like arcades and like bungee jumping and go karts. So it wasn't like we were in the you know you're in the mountains, but it's not like you're like in the wilderness, right? So we, we yeah, it's like it's like uh, it's like. It's like Branson in the mountains. It's like what a campground is to when you go pitch a tent in the woods. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's a cabin. So it makes like city people like me feel like they're actually in the wilderness. But you're not at all because you can cross the street and go to a fucking Panera. So. Right. <laughs> so uh, we go down there and on the way back, my wife and I have a little extra time before we both have to go back to work. And we're like, well, fuck it. We'll just go up through Indiana from Tennessee to Chicago. We'll go up through Indiana. We'll stop at this amusement park uh, on the day that we're headed home. We go to the amusement park, spend four or five hours. It's only about three more hours to get back to Chicago. And as we're driving, traffic stops. And what had happened was uh, the bridge on I-65 in Indiana had to go under emergency repair because I guess the construction workers were repairing something minor and then the bridge started swaying. So they, so they shut down the highway. So we were sitting there for an hour trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And there's like a map called ways where it's like social media, but for driving it. Yeah. You you check in. uh, Yeah. And you could like, you report, you report to it and it's all just user uh, input on what's happening. Right, And I'm like messaging people like up the road, like where it shows the the roadblock starts, like what the fuck's going on up there. And they're like, dude, bridges close is going to be closed for 12 hours. And I'm like, Oh, I am not fucking sitting in this bullshit for 12 hours. But at this point, yeah. traffic is still kind of creeping. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, there's an exit just up the way. Uh, we'll get off on that exit uh, and we'll try to find a way to back around. Right. So traffic right. is slowly crawling. And of course, I have two kids. They're starting to get irritable. It's hotter than hell. They're crying. And uh, I see people start heading up the shoulder. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? I've never driven on the shoulder before. Fuck it. I'm going on the shoulder. So I go around the fucking stupid Aztec in front of me and the car in front of him is like a big box truck. Maybe it was like, like, a, it, like, I think it was like, uh, what's that moving company? Like two men and a bitch moving or something like that. Like two, two men in a truck, yeah, two guys in a truck or two dudes in a truck. And so that guy is going to be a hero and he's really going to take a stand. So he pulls all the way over in the shoulder to block me from passing. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, fair enough. I I guess he got me, right? He got me, so whatever. So I pull back into my lane, and now somehow I'm getting separated from him, but he stays in the lane, and now he's blocking the an additional lane of people driving up the shoulder, right? So now on this two-lane highway, it's essentially three lanes wide because it's like the two normal lanes and a lane of people on the shoulder uh, stopped by this guy in this box truck. So I'm like, all right, well, that guy thinks he's a hero. I'm going to out alpha him. So I just wedged my car up to his driver's side and kept his ass in the shoulder and started waving people past us. <laughs> 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 and the dude was like screaming out his window. And eventually, as I'm like driving and just kind of laughing, because, you know, I can hear him yelling at me because we're only a few feet apart. Um uh-huh. Eventually, I look back and he's like twenty cars back. He because he he thought that because he went over and blocked the shoulder that other people were going to be respectful and be like, "Oh, that guy's being a cool guy and not letting anybody cut the line." And then no, right. it just took a guy like me just to like basically pin him in the shoulder and wave everybody past, so he got screwed over. <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to I tried to be that guy once. 
What, you're that guy that like uh, pulls into the open lanes and... I thought about it once. I was uh, I was sitting in traffic and like three or four cars had passed down the shoulder and I saw one coming from way back and I was like, you know what, fuck this. I was like, he can wait like everybody else. So I put like half my car on the shoulder and then I was like, I kind of bitched out and I was like, well, you know what? Whatever. If he wants to do it, he can yeah, do he it. Yeah, he just wants it more, man. <laughs> it yeah, it w- yeah, it was a cop responding to the scene. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that asshole in his fancy car with his bullshit fancy yeah. lights. Thinks he's better than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, his lights were not. That's why I was just like, thought it was just another car coming up because I'd seen three or four pass. Yeah. And uh, no, I almost blocked a cop from getting to the scene, but thank God I stopped myself. <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> this episode of Nothing Important is actually also i was thinking kind of like a simulcast you know how how affiliated tv when something happens they'll do like a simulcast like there'll be some major announcement say like a sports star retiring and espn and abc like the- since they're both owned by disney they'll like simulcast the news conference mm-hmm. that's kind of what we're doing with uh this week's episode of it's all good men and nothing important that is exactly what we're doing right, with this episode. If you think about it, like, right, there will important. probably be uh, nothing important. There will be like the nothing important theme song and then probably a conversation and probably this explaining it. And then we're going mm-hmm. right into the interview with Mel Rodriguez. He right. was a super cool dude. He was awesome guy, right? Like uh, a very, very, very cool dude. Yeah. Yeah. He's on. Uh, he plays Todd on Last Man on earth and he played marco in better call saul and he was cool enough to come on our show uh through a courtesy to it's saw good men which is our other podcast so if you haven't heard it www.itsawgoodmen.com it's also available on itunes uh make sure that you check it out because awesome conversation he played a really small small part but like such it was a small yet but a very very influential part integral yeah it was like a small part but a super large character yeah and he's got fans there's fans of the character yeah he's got his own thing going on so i hope he um i hope he returns for a better call saul season two so so stick around after uh dave's book of things he doesn't care about and uh it'll be our chat with (laughs) mel rodriguez from better call saul and the last man on earth I was going to say, maybe I can patch this in. I, I thought it was awesome that uh, you put me in charge of the phone call for the first time. Yeah. And I failed pretty miserably. Well, <laughs> no, you didn't. You well, the first thing was uh, I run my phone through the computer and I listen to everything on the phone through my headphones. I had the headphones in the wrong port. So every time I went to listen when he was calling, I couldn't hear anything. So I had to hang up on him. And uh, when he first called, I wasn't quite ready yet. And he said that those difficulties and the hanging up and stuff was actually kind of what made it a good interview because it takes all like the pretentiousness out of it well, or the uh, seriousness out well, of it. Well, I, I think I could totally see that because one thing I never wanted to do, well, when we started this, we didn't think nothing important first off would ever have any real guest on it besides our friends. Remember how right. excited I was when I called you that uh, Greg Johnson, the uh, co-creator of Code Jam and Earl, agreed to be on our show? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was excited just because, one, it was a guest that wasn't going to be one of our friends, and two, he's just a really kick-ass dude and created a really fucking awesome game that I still love to this day here 20 years later. You know what I mean? Right. He's somebody that you respect. Right, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that that was kind of fun. Uh, but as we go through it and we're, we're interviewing, you know, like like famous people and celebrities and just like entrepreneurs and like all these cool people, one thing one thing I'm I don't want to happen – is like it becomes just me peppering them with questions like I was Barbara Walters or some shit. Like right. I find that so lame. Like, Yeah, like have you seen, uh, I was telling you about uh, Chronicon, <laughs> episode 420. Yeah, you were saying something uh, about Doug Benson. Yeah. So he's in a hotel and he, on Twitter this guy is like, hey, I'm in your hotel. I do a podcast. Do you want to stop by for a quick interview? And he's like, well, the cameras are rolling, so let's do it. Mm-hmm. And so he goes, this guy's, it's actually a different hotel, but he ends up in the guy's room. He doesn't know the guy. He's just, okay, spontaneously do a podcast. And he just, he's asking all the standard bullshit questions. Yeah. You know, and you could tell it was like a very kind of awkward interview. Yeah, yeah. But we, we just want to talk to, we just want to have conversations. Yeah, like, like my process is, is I have like key points that I want to hit. But other than that, I don't write questions at all. I spend more time watching the time 
to respect the time that our guests have agreed to give us than I do right, yeah. reading actual questions. Right. Like on my computer, you would just the, see like a bullet list of maybe four or five things. And uh, other than that, I, I just go off the top of my head and just try to keep up a good conversation because uh, I'm, I'm not fucking Barbara Walters. You know, I understand that I'm a podcaster, you know, like we're, we're two nobodies who do this for absolutely free. It's not like it's right. not like we're creating some sort of production package for like a current affair or <laughs> anything like that, right. you know? And we're just trying to be a vehicle for people that we think are are cool and respect to get their shit out to our a uh, uh, mediocre fan base. Yeah. <laughs> hey, like I said, you know, I only talk to people that you or I give a shit about. I wouldn't talk to Brad Pitt because I don't give a fuck about Brad Pitt. I really couldn't even imagine. I actually, I would talk to Brad Pitt though. You always mention Brad Pitt, but he's one of those actors that I think has done enough cool shit to talk about. I only, not the, not the heartthrob leading man, but he does like kooky side shit too, which is pretty cool. I think I only mentioned Brad Pitt because I'm so far out of the loop on most things. He's the only like big time <laughs> actor that comes to my head when I think of somebody who would be universally famous. Like he's yeah. the first one that pops in. <laughs> plus I'm still, he's Brad Pitt, man. Plus I'm still bitter about world war Z. Maybe we can do an episode about that <laughs> another time. <laughs> it's not a good movie. <laughs> Oh, it's awesome. Um, it, it would be awesome if it wasn't World War Z. <laughs> like, have you read the book? No. See, you know these things, Walking Dead, stuff like well, that. You know. The book, though, it, it's not even like they strayed away from the source material. The book isn't the story of one guy surviving the apocalypse. It's a history book. So it's like a fictional history book with interviews and military documents from the survivors that was written after... It's, it's basically so the oral history. You're saying they, sh you're saying that they should have got Ken Burns to do World War Z. I don't know who Ken Burns is. <laughs> he does those PBS. Documentaries. Oh yes, no. That, seriously, that would be awesome. Or like if they did an eight. Yeah, like with that style. Like if yeah. you're saying that's the style that the book is going for. Right. It's like a World War the II book, book. The book actually takes place after the war, and it's a series of oral history from people who survived the zombie apocalypse. So like every chapter is another person's story and how they survived. And then it's all that's cool. it's all loosely tied together with how it started and how it ended. Right? Hmm. And then World War yeah. Z the movie, it's uh Brad Pitt is fucking Superman <laughs> and avoids <laughs> quick moving zombies. <laughs> that's pretty much it. By injecting himself with the virus. Yeah, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. I don't believe that happened in the book at all. It's fucking dumb. Well, and, that's not how it really happened anyway. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, never forget zombie apocalypse. Never yeah. forget <laughs> ZP0015. Do <laughs> and now an excerpt from the book of things Dave doesn't care about. Anything any political candidate has to say about anything until they actually take office and start doing things. This was an excerpt from the book of things Dave doesn't care about. You're listening to Nothing Important. Oh, God. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, I would have never figured that out. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's, well, uh, it's, it's been I, smooth so far. With, with, your, with technical stuff at all, I commend you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I actually <laughs> went to school for this stuff, so. Oh, right on. <laughs> well, you, you know what? You know what, Mel? This is actually par for the course, because if yeah. there's... If there's one thing we do almost every episode is hang up on the person who's our guest. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. We have, we have literally hung up on just about everybody from like uh, like Ball Brian to Patrick Fabian. We have literally hung up on every single guest <laughs> trying to figure out how to make it work. <laughs> well, yeah, they're all very nice people. I'm sure they understood. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's been it's been a real treat. Yeah. Yeah, I so, know that had something to the sauce, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, well we, yeah, we we won't keep you too long, but we'll we'll just jump into it and uh, and have some fun. And if you don't mind, I actually have some questions from the uh, Better Call Saul subreddit. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on the somewhat important hotline, he plays uh, Jimmy McGill's buddy Marco on Better Call Saul, and is currently playing Todd on Fox's uh, The Last Man on Earth. Mel Rodriguez, Mel, thank you for coming on our little uh, 
podcast experiment. <laughs> uh, it, it's my pleasure, guys. Absolutely. So <laughs> it's good to be here. <laughs> we're, we're so glad to have you. I, I got to be honest. Uh, uh, somehow uh, early on when we first started at Saul Goodman, I would always complain because we only had like 50, 50 Twitter followers. And now we have like 11,000 or something like that. And I, I was scrolling down and I saw... I saw uh, you, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm totally going to direct message him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I was like, wow, this is great. Yeah, no, and, and, and it was a few days ago. Yeah, you, we, uh, we got to talking on, on the direct message, and I, I still don't know how that works. I'm still trying to figure out Twitter. But I got your message, and you were like, would you like to come on? And I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Absolutely. Well, we're, we're glad to have you. Dave and I are big fans of uh, – of of Better Call Saul and uh, the beauty of your character Marco is you you've played it so well and you've made such a huge impact for having relatively limited screen time on that show. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, you know, I I I, um, I was really excited to get that call that I got. You know, just uh, to have been part of uh, Saul's journey. You know, and, and becoming who the guy he became. You know, part of his character development was just so cool. You know, I remember telling my wife, like, you know, cause I, it was super secret. So I couldn't tell anybody anything about anything really. And, uh, I remember reading the scripts and telling uh, my wife, like, I'm the reason Saul wears his pinky ring, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, that's my pinky ring. I gave it to him, you know, he, he gets it from me. And I just thought that was, was really, really cool. I, I love the way they're, you know, developing Saul and letting us know he was such an interesting character in, in, in Breaking Bad and just Absolutely. see him become, you know, what we get to, to see why he becomes the guy he becomes is really cool. Right. And, and now you're, you're such a huge part of that. Was it, was it weird? Uh, was it weird for you knowing that like you would have really limited screen time, but like, it, but you're such an integral part of the story. Like, did that put any pressure on you to perform or, or, uh, how- well, you know, I, I found out I had gotten cast, I think maybe a week before we actually started shooting. So, uh, oh, wow. and, and, and I didn't have really much information at all, except that I was a really big fan of, uh, Breaking Bad. So I'd seen that like twice. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I, you know, I got these scripts about a week before and I knew he was from Cicero and I thought, man, I've got to do, you know, he's got to have a Cicero accent. I, and I, 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 I'd, I'd never done Cicero before, but I had kind of played around with Chicago a little bit mm-hmm. and they, you know, and so, um, you know, I, I wanted it to be authentic. And so I called up a couple of friends. I, like I was telling you earlier, my dad lived in Hammond and he used to go to Chicago all the time. So, um, and then, and then Bob helped me with that too. Um, but it was just, it felt like you know, we really, we really crammed a lot into, um, that, 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 small amount of time that we did have, you know? Um, yeah. and I just, you know, I, I love these guys and respect them so much. I just, I just really knew I had to bring my, you know, my, my a game. So I did my best. Yeah. And, and, you know, you totally did. The, the great thing about your character is, uh, you know, uh, part of the fun of, of, uh, better call Saul is that we, we know how it ends up. <laughs> and right, so like, right. yeah. so, yeah. so, uh, Dave and I, we always push our, our podcast as, uh, we're, we're not like the analytical, let's analyze everything. We're kind of like everybody's buddy on the couch where we just like to give like, you know, theories off the top of our heads and such. And I, I, I remember when we saw, when we saw your character, we we're like, Oh man, we, you know, this is awesome. Like this, this guy's kick ass and they're doing the flashbacks. There's going to, there's going to be more, uh, shenanigans, I guess you, you could say yeah. with this guy, and then uh, no, they really gave us kind of all we needed, but we wanted more. <laughs> uh, yeah, me too, man. I, I'll tell you, I we, we um um it was just such a good it was such a good time, and uh, and you know we shoot all that stuff out there in Albuquerque, and those guys are so. I mean, I just can't tell you. Like, I, I've worked with a lot of crews, and they're just they're just a they're they're just this incredibly well oiled machine you know, um, just all around. And so it was just really, really cool to be a part of. Um, and to be a part of, like, I mean, I really, like, you know, Breaking Bad was one of my favorite shows. That, mm-hmm. You know, Saul was one of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. I, when I heard this television show was happening, just as a fan, I was thrilled. So to get the gig was just like, you know, <laughs> 
<laughs> it's, it's, and, been uh, a, it's been a pretty common sentiment amongst their interviews is that for one like everybody was a fan of the show and then you know got on yeah. better call Saul and everybody really appreciates the uh, the production and how the crew runs and, and the way they do things the way the auditions are run seems to be a little yeah. different and and like it, everybody's got great stories yeah. about it it is yeah you know going into the audition they didn't we, we, we I didn't even get you know usually you'll get copy and they're very very they were very very secretive about this copy they were like all watermarked with your name and uh, they they had all these like codes on them so that you know you couldn't copy it and, like you know once you got the email like self destructed and all this stuff <laughs> and um, I mean really they were really really uh, um, careful about about uh, you know uh, leaking stuff um, and then I actually ended up finding out that the sides we got for the audition weren't even part of the show they read very much kind of like a um, almost like, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with David Mamet's, uh, American Buffalo, that play. No, um, but they took place in like a pawn shop and they were, you know, it had to do with this coin dealer and these two guys being kind of like, you know, um, on the hustle, but it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't, this, you know, it wasn't necessarily Marco and it was completely different. It was just a scene, you know, was it, was it from that? What's that? I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Was it similar to to like the coin scene in the second episode where where they were? Uh... It was a little of that, but they weren't even you know they weren't in a bar doing pulling pulling that hustle there. They they weren't mm-hmm. they weren't uh, you know they were they were in a pawn shop you know. Yeah. Uh, so you know they didn't want I didn't they didn't want to give anything away you know. Um, and so that bar scene by by the way that bar scene was just one of the most fun. We were at this old kind of German bar and. In, 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 uh, it looked very, very Chicago, actually, in in the middle of Albuquerque, and we were in that we were in that bar doing that coin scene for God. I think we were in there for four days. Yeah. Oh wow. We were. We, Dave and I kind of left about that too. We <laughs> where we're from, we have a bar. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna say the name because I I personally don't really care for the guy, but totally, <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally a bar where uh, it's it's all like just an obnoxious number of fluorescent beer advertisements and paneling all over the walls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's you know. Absolutely. So the attention to detail was perfect. <laughs> freaking old style which was pretty like they were oh, yeah. pretty yeah 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 so we were like um keeping that they are very true to keeping it true you know <laughs> absolutely we we really love the the first scene uh two things stuck about us uh stuck out with us with the uh first scene where um where where you guys pulled the first uh scam on uh on a uh, stewie yeah, yeah. And uh, first we were laughing because you were getting poked with a stick because at the time we didn't know whether or not you were alive or not. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I think yeah. Dave even talked about that. Like, what do you, what's the first thing you do when you come across a dead body? You get, you know, poke him with a stick. <laughs> He's alive. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Absolutely. And I was, uh, we were joking about that on set. Yeah, it's so great. And then the, uh, and then uh, when you started, uh, when, when it was, you know, your character, when Marco was actually just kind of, you know, supposed to be in a haze and he started calling him buttholes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Such a- you know, and, I, and I think that was the thing too. Me and, me and uh, Bob talked about that is that, you know, I, I think Marco got a real kick out of getting an opportunity to act. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you know, these guys, um, it was so much fun, man, because it, they really, they go back, they're best buddies. And I feel like, you know, on some level, obviously not like hustling like they did, but I had, you know, friends that we pull pranks and stuff like that. And like, just afterwards, like sit down and kind of reminisce about like this and that. And I think the two of them were just, you know, Mark especially was really proud that they were able to, to pull that, that's that scam off, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and it's, yeah, I, I, damn, too, it's like you know i mean a lot a lot has to go right for that scam to work right you know if you think about it you dissect it and stuff and and i remember uh talking with peter peter gold like you know what if the dude doesn't see the cash on the floor you know what i mean what if he misses seeing my legs you know what i mean mm-hmm. the guy you know like a, really a lot has to go right for that thing to go right you know Totally. It, 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 it was so well played. I was, I almost made it my mission. 
I, I almost made it my mission for like two weeks after to to bring back butthole because like like you know after after you get out of like eighth grade you know like you graduate to like asshole or cocksucker or something like that yeah yeah like, you know what like people don't call each other buttholes enough you no, know so like no you know, no they my, really don't no. and I I feel I feel kind of grateful that we were able to kind of bring that back in a way I, and I remember the next day it's funny with Twitter you get as you guys know. Like you'll do your show and probably get responses immediately on Twitter and <laughs> right. butthole was hashtag butthole was all over Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was I was kind of teasing um, I was kind of teasing the fact that we were going to record with you today and I wanted to put on Twitter like, "Hey, you buttholes, recording with a special guest, new show coming soon." <laughs> but then I'm like, "No, it's going to ruin it's going to ruin the surprise because you." <laughs> Because oh, like yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. They'll, yeah they'll be like oh right the butthole guy yeah right yeah <laughs> and I and it's funny I've actually uh, I've actually been uh, approached on the street and said you're the butthole guy <laughs> <laughs> they signed the well, and you're the ass man <laughs> yeah, you're the asshole yeah well, you know so. I think I think it's just a testament to how you played the character because what works so well is. I mean, it, it, at its base, I mean, it's a really funny scene with a lot of, you know, like the poking with the stick and, and the totally immature use of pejoratives and stuff like that. But like with, with the tone and the kind of juvenile humor <laughs> of it all, and it, it like it is it, just such such a great scene. And I think that's why a lot of people, uh, you know, really kind of fell in love with the character, because like. Everybody has, you know, everybody has a buddy like that where like even when you're even the most serious moments, you're, you're you know, you're you're still have these stupid little inside jokes or, you know, if you're trying to pull something, you'll you'll do something just to kind of aggravate your buddy a little bit, even when it's inappropriate. And like, <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, hell, me and David made two podcasts based around that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, that's, you know, and I think that's the thing. I think that's kind of which I was really proud and honored to be able to do was, you know, uh, is that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of one of those guys in the story that is, you know, Marco is one of these guys in the story that's responsible for, you know, uh, uh, solve kind of from becoming like a kid to becoming a man, you know, right. In a lot of ways, he's that kind of transition point. And, um, and then, you know, and him making that decision to, you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting what I, I, I love that about Vincent and, and Peter is that they really, they're, they're really into these character driven stories and what, um, you know, what, it t- what, what, what a man is made of, you know, man or woman is made of, really, right. you know, yeah. and, um, and we really get an opportunity to see that with, with Saul. Um, you know, I, I was, I was talking to somebody earlier, like, I think if, um, I think if the Godfather were around today and Francis Ford Coppola was doing that, he might do it on Netflix or a mm-hmm. and or something nowadays. You know, we get an opportunity to have an entire season about, you know, Sonny Corleone, which would have been fucking awesome. You know, right, yeah. <laughs> sorry, excuse my language. No, no, uh, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, or, that's cool. Or, you, know, <laughs> or, or you, you get an opportunity to see like all these great characters, like, uh, who's that character? Uh, um, who I love so much. He shows up, and is talking to Marlon Brando, uh, Luke Brat, you know? Oh, yeah, Lucas Brat. The whole season about Luke Brat, where he sleeps and what he's about, like what made him become a killer and, you know, what what these things that make people tick. And mm-hmm. that's the really great thing about these guys is they write so dimensional, you know? Totally. Uh, right. Well, and so they, their show, like the whole yeah. point of every show that they're the Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, the character development is the show. Like they're Breaking it, Bad. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's those are the those are the things I grew up watching, and they're happening on TV. And they're these big, like twenty course meals now, rather than just a snack. Not that The Godfather was a snack at all. That was a meal, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you know there are all these other, you know, chapters which is just so cool, you know? I mean, it really is like you're like, you've had just the right amount. Like you get a script like that and it's like, all you got to do is dance. It's like, you've got the greatest amount. You've got the perfect amount of booze in your system and your favorite song comes on <laughs> and, you know, I mean, yeah, and you just right. you know exactly what to do. You know, instinct takes over. So, right. you know, the, 
I, I totally know how you feel. You know, I get like six or seven beers in me, and if uh, Hold On by Wilson Phillips comes on at the bar, I am rocking that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson Phillips. It's time to get on that dance floor, dude. <laughs> right on. Dave, Dave will attest. Dave? Uh, yeah, you're the reason I know how to play that song on guitar, yeah. <laughs> Oh God! Well, kind of touching on that that note, Mel. I'm going to start with a couple of, of of questions from the folks over at the subreddit for Better Call Saul, if you don't mind. Sure, let's do it. Okay, awesome. Uh, MJ Fleck says, "How bittersweet was it to be able to play such a great character, knowing that his time on the show had to be limited?" In, incredibly bittersweet, you know. And 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 I and and we all. It's funny because. Um, we had such a good time that the, the running joke on set was, uh, you know, how, how, how they, these guys can write themselves out of anything. You know, how could they possibly maybe even write themselves out of Marco being dead? Right. Yeah. It's uh, the long con. <laughs> yeah. Right, it's the long, long con. Yeah. Absolutely. So it, it was incredible. You know, I knew, you know, I've got, I've got basically, you know, a couple episodes and that's it. But so it was just a matter of kind of just cherishing it for what it is and if marco does um you know come back at some point that'll just be uh you know extra gravy you know uh, it's not entirely impossible since i mean the whole show was technically a flashback but marco's story is all told in right. flashback so they can jump around yeah oh well, yeah no it, it totally could happen and that and that would be really great you know so we, we we did a uh we talked about that on the on the uh, uh better call Saul podcast where they were uh where they were that other what's that podcast that the guys do i forgot what it's is it called better call saul or is it yeah better call saul insider yeah yeah it, that's right and, and and vince and peter were on and they said you know we you know we really want to have you back they obviously aren't going to say anything but mm-hmm. you know i mean you know you remember in breaking bad those situations they write themselves out of they're the kings of that so um you never know yeah you never know. Right. Yeah, and, and he certainly could appear again in a flashback so. Absolutely. Reddit user Edgar Devine kind of brings that up. Uh, they say, you know, do you think we'll see any more of Marco in, in any more flashbacks? I hope so, man. I have I, I have such a good time working on that thing. I really hope so. So I don't know, but I, uh, that's the answer to that. But I'd really love to come back anytime. Yeah, um, you know, I, I I think pretty much everybody everybody would welcome it. Like I said, it, I mean, it was such in the grand scheme of the thirteen episodes of the first season, it was such a limited amount of of screen time. But it was just one of those things. Like as soon as as soon as you were on and you played your parts, everybody was like, "Oh, that guy's that guy's fucking awesome." Well, ask for it. You know, I mean, those of you know, ask for it. If you want, you know, tell people ask for more. I'll I'll be there. I promise. We'll start a camp- <laughs> well, Twitter campaign. <laughs> We'll, yeah, we'll, do the best. <laughs> we'll do the best we can. Um, Becca, Becca, Becca Orla, I think her screen name is, or his screen name is, uh, says okay. uh, he wanted to let you know that you did a brilliant job as Marco, and he was a brilliant character. And uh, and they would like you to explain what a dry standpipe is. A dry standpipe? Well, you know, we were looking into that, and I think the standpipe is actually... The one that sticks up and actually shoots the water, like, um, it's got a, from what I understand, you know, is, is it's, it's, it literally looks kind of like a pipe coming out of the ground rather than what you see with the hydrants. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I, you've uh, seen those before, haven't you? They're, actually, in my, in my professional life, I actually have to deal with them and took some, some training on them. So, <laughs> so I actually put some light on it. What, what, so is that what a standpipe is? Those pipes that kind of stick out of the ground? That, uh, yeah, absolutely. When, when you have high rise buildings or like multi tiered bu- buildings, the standpipe is where there's an alternate water source for the fire supply should something happen to the main water source. So it like supplies, it calls it a standpipe because it, it goes upright through the middle of the building and it supplies, it supplies water to the main uh, fire extinguishers and such. <laughs> boom. Boom. Nailed it. There you go. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what we had heard. I got, you said it better than I could. But. <laughs> and then uh, Mel, the most important question is uh, what is your favorite frozen pizza? My favorite frozen pizza. Oh, geez. Uh, let's see. You know, I, I could go for a Red Baron sometimes, just kind of right on. Okay, be, be simple, you know, or a, a, a Tombstone. 
Hell I yeah. gotta tell you, I and I'm gonna get a lot of like shit for this, but Chicago Deep Dish is my favorite. If I could get like Geno's delivered, <laughs> you know, that, which I understand you can, um, mm-hmm. and and I and I might. Uh, Deep Dish is my favorite. I mean, you just it's 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 the best. Um, I yes. tell you what, next time, it's almost next time not you're in pizza. That? Next time you're in Chicago, I got a I got a place for you. Yes. So next time you're up here, yeah, I got a place for you. Hit me up on Twitter or over the phone or whatever, and I'll I'll take you out for some pizza. <laughs> we'll take you up on that. Absolutely. Yeah, please. You better please call me because if it's the place yeah. you went to last time, I'll drive up for that too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I'll actually, bring I heard along too. I, I heard that uh, Gino's is uh, doing frozen pizzas now. I heard. Yeah. yeah. I don't. We don't have them in the stores out here. Also, Trader Joe's has got a pretty pretty. Have you guys have Trader Joe's out there? We do. Everybody talks about Trader Joe's frozen pizza. I think the entire cast of uh, Better Call Saul <laughs> eats uh, Trader Joe's frozen pizza. <laughs> yeah, well, they're really good. <laughs> I mean, they're kind of gourmetish, you know. They're like truffle and cheese and stuff like that. But they've got a good sausage. It's pretty great. Awesome. Well, Mel, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show, uh, Marco. I hope we see more of them. And uh, absolutely all the best of luck on The Last Man on Earth and uh, all the other projects you got going on. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Um, and one, if you don't mind me plugging Getting On on HBO. Oh, yeah. We'll yeah, please do. Next. We'll, we'll, get in, we'll be back next next year. Uh, it's starting in November. Uh, well, this year starting in November. And, um, yeah, it needs a little love. But uh, thank you guys for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. And... Um, yeah, it was fun. Oh, thank you. Go. Some time. All right. Yes. Go. Be sure to follow Nothing Important online at nothingimportantpodcast.com. Find us on iTunes, on Twitter at Not Important PC, and you can also find us on Facebook. Nothing Important is recorded with help from Third City Sound in Joliet, Illinois. Thanks for being awesome.